Here we've got a sound wave and you can see on our x-axis we've got uh, the time going along in milliseconds and on the y-axis we've got the amplitude which means the volume of the sound and the red line in the middle is the sound wave. This is um, an analog sound wave, it's a continuous line and this is showing the electricity that's taken in by the movement of a microphone as a sound is produced. So how does a computer represent this digitally? Well, the first thing it does is it takes samples at certain fixed intervals in time. So let's take, for example, the milliseconds that are shown on our x-axis. The way that a computer will turn sound into digital data is to say every one of those samples, or those periods, sorry, it will take a sample of the amplitude. So, for example, let's take this first one. It would look at what value the amplitude is at that point of time, and it might record that. And let's just imagine we've got an amplitude that runs from 1 to 16. So, you can see that the first sample in our sound is a value of 1. So we could represent that in binary uh, nicely as just a 1. And we go on to do the same thing with our next sample, which is a 3, and our next sample, which is an 8, and our next sample, which, now this is a bit difficult, it's fallen between the two. So the computer has to make some sort of decision, it might round, it might go to the nearest one, in which case, this time it's probably 12. But as you can see, we're, we're going to lose a little bit of the original information here, because we're going to get a, an approximation, not the actual value. Let's assume it's 12. And our next sample is definitely 12. And our next sample is 10. And so on. And we can do this for the whole file. So, now we've finished sampling our audio file. And we've got a reading of the amplitude of the audio once every millisecond. That means we've taken a sample of the amplitude once every millisecond. That means we've got a sample rate of... 1,000 samples per second, or we call that 1 kilohertz. So now that we've done that, we would then store those uh, binary representations in a file, and they'd get loaded up by a computer and used to reconstruct this audio signal. So let's see how that works. So here I am, I'm uh, now on the computer that's loading up the file, and I've got my digital data, I've got my binary values for each sample, and I'm going to reconstruct them by plotting each point on my graph. So first of all, we just need to put in the, the uh, amplitude values, and we know that each sample is going to happen each millisecond. And we know that each sample represents the amplitude at each millisecond of the sound. So, we simply now need to plot our values on our graph. So this is the first sample and the value here is 1. Here's the next sample and its value is 3. And the next one is 8. The next one is 12. There's another one that's 12. Next one is 10 and so on until we've reconstructed the whole wave. So now that we've plotted um, all of our samples onto our graph we then have to sort of fill in um, the graph up to each sample size. And this is the digital representation of that particular sound. And we can now compare the original sound to our digitally reproduced sound. As you can see, the general shape of our sound is there in our digital data. But a lot of information and a lot of the, the detail has been lost. And this is due to the fact that we could only take a sample uh, once every millisecond. And our samples had to be a number between 0 and 16, which is a limit of uh, our 4-bit samples that we'd be using. If we wanted to have a, a much higher quality reproduction of the original sound, there are two things we could do. One is 
we could take samples more regularly. That means we increase the sample rate. So rather than taking a thousand samples a second, we might take uh, something like 40,000 samples a second, which is much closer to how, uh, how often a sample is taken on a CD. Also, rather than trying to record the amplitude as a value between 0 and 15, um, we could try to do it between a much, much greater range of numbers uh, using more than 4 bits. If we used, say, 16 bits for every sample, then we'd be able to record values between 0 and 65,000, which would give us much, much, much greater granularity when we're recording our amplitudes and would allow us to record uh, our sound much, much more sensitively. So that's how sound is sampled and stored digitally on a computer. The two factors that really impact upon the um, quality of the recording are how often the samples are taken, um, and that's our sample rate, and that's measured in hertz, which is number of times a second, and how, um, how large a sample or how many bits we use uh, when we take each sample of the amplitude, um, and that's called our sample size. So in our example, we use 4-bit samples, but we could use 8-bit or 16-bit or 24-bit samples for uh, a more precise reading of the amplitude at any given point in time.